Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dies, and today we're going to make a side fan fold. Start by smoothing out as many wrinkles as you can, and then turn your shirt in front of you so that the underarm is closest to you, and using a washable marker and a piece of kite string, mark out your pattern. And then you just want to pleat along this line that you drew and make that line as straight as possible. And I'd say for this shirt, the pleats are about an inch tall. Now that I have that line all pleated up, I'm going to secure it by using my tiny baby hair rubber bands. You could also use kite string. It really is just a matter of preference. I like to use rubber bands whenever I can just because I think they're quick and easy. You could even use sinew to tie this off if you wanted to create white lines. You can do whatever you want. Now for the rest of the shirt, you just want to continue to pleat. And back here is always the dilemma. Do I add secondary pleats to shorten the height of them? Or do I just go all the way having a single pleat from the beginning all the way to the end? For this one, I'm choosing to go with a single pleat all the way from the left side all the way to the right side. Where the seams of the shoulder and the collar all come together, sometimes it can be hard to fold or to pleat. Just do your best and keep working at it. I have found that twisting it in front of me so I have a better look on it um, is very helpful. And then, like I said, just continue to pleat all the way down. Now you notice how when I first started, the pleats were about an inch. And now back here, they're about an inch and a half to two inches. And that's fine. Um, I could have, like I mentioned, made secondary pleats to make them lower, but this is an incline ice dye, so it's pretty forgiving. For this project, I decided to go with the dye over ice method, so I'm just adding a thin layer of my nugget ice to the top of the shirt. I have this on my long closet made rack, propped up with two yogurt containers on the left, and then down on the right side at the bottom of the incline, I have it propped up with two empty dye jars. And I don't know if you can really see it or not, but along the foil, um, the ice barrier, I've put paper clips as my guides because I can't see the lines on my shirt anymore because the ice is there. So um, the paper clips are gonna help me know where I wanna place my dye. I needed to let my ice machine fill back up, so the project's been melting now for about an hour, and that's okay. I'm just going to add another thin layer of ice, and then I'm going to set it aside, and it's recommended that you let your project's batch at 70 degrees or higher 
for at least 24 hours. This project batch for the full 48. So it's been 48 hours and now it's time for the rinse out. And for the life of me, I do not know why I'm not wearing gloves. And I realized in the tessellation shirt, I wasn't wearing gloves for that one either. Um, I guess sometimes I forget. Oh well, okay. So for the rinse out, you want to start by using cold water. That's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric. And then you want to increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs basically clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I use Kirilon, which is a professional textile detergent in a hot water cycle. And I usually do about two hot water cycles with the Kirilon. Then I do a third or a final hot water cycle using Millsoft. And Millsoft is a professional fabric softener and I get both Kirilon and Millsoft from Dharma Trading Company. And I do have links for them down below in the description box so it's easy for you to find, along with everything else that I use for tie-dye. So make sure you check that out. And then I'll put it in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our incline side fan fold ice dye after it's been washed and dried and ironed. And I think the shirt turned out fantastic. It looks like a giant flower. Um, keeping in mind that when you make yours, like if you want to make an actual flower, you know, you can change your color palette. You could do uh, yellow in the underarm instead of blue, you know, for like the center of the flower and so on. But this was the color palette that was asked for. And so this is what we did. And it's really pretty. Um, and it has like a really nice sort of soft pastel look to it. And I feel that that came from doing the dye over ice. It just sort of diluted the dye more and helped with it flowing. Had I done the dye under ice method, I think I would have had like more rigid dye lines, if that makes any sense at all. And then there's that one spot right there and I thought, oh no, my washable marker didn't come out. But that's not washable marker, that's just a piece of dye and with the way it split. So overall, I love this shirt and um, I hope you do too. So what do you think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.